You're the best, Bubo. You finally proved useful. for ill and damaged minds. What can I do for you, sir? Or madam? Uh, well, I'd like to uh, inquire about a patient who I believe is being uh, uh, treated at your institution. Uh, his name is Albert Wessler. I'm sorry, sir, but I can't give out that information if you don't have the password given to relatives. Do you have one? Unfortunately, I don't have that. I'm not a relative. I'm calling from the Clawville Police Department. Oh, I see. In that case, officer, I'd advise you to visit our institution personally. Our director and I would be happy to answer your questions. Thank you, miss. I guess I'll do that. We'll welcome you with open arms, sir. Have yourself a beautiful... Starlit night. Oh, uh, <laughs> thanks. Uh, goodbye. See you soon. So, we have to go there. Ah, the thought gives me goosebumps. Chicken bumps aren't good enough for you? Ha ha ha. So, I... It'd be better if I called Lewis. He'll open up a room for you to sleep in. Whew, great idea. Hey, Lewis, it's, uh, it's me again. Oh, hello, Sonny. What's up? Were you sleeping, pal? Me? Oh, I w w wasn't. Uh, anyway, I'm always at your s s service. Would you open up a room for Marty? Thanks, Lewis. I'm not even gonna say it. I, I, I will. You owe me one. Again. Yeah. Sorry for the mess, Marty. I, uh, rarely have visitors. Don't worry about it, Sonny. I didn't expect anything else. Uh, thanks. I slept like I used to sleep years ago. Like a miner or a soldier. Empty, dead tired. Then I saw Tessa my darling little daughter. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't recall her face. I reached out to her, but she just kept getting further and further away. Then I saw Molly. But she wasn't real, just the ghost of a memory. I'm here, I cried, but all I heard was laughter, not hers. Who's there? Suddenly, she appeared. Natasha. Just stood there laughing. But her eyes were cold. Then she said something. 
painted red, painted red, painted red. That no, was just a dream, Sonny. Nothing more. I looked at Marty and I saw the same thing in his eyes as he probably saw in mine. It's time to hit the brakes, to turn back, go home and forget about all of this. <laughs> of course, I stepped on the gas instead. Honestly, I wasn't expecting anything good, but this... Ooh, just like a horror movie. I was thinking the same. Appearances can be deceiving. Let's hope so. This picture... It's very... Special? Even if you manage to escape, there's nothing but hills and forests for a hundred miles. Imagine how many poor lunatic ghosts must haunt those woods. Ooh, Sonny, you're creeping me out. We should go to reception first. Let them know we're here. This guy seems strangely familiar to me. You don't say. You've been treated here too. That would explain a lot. Oh, don't be stupid. I'm serious. Take a closer look. No. Well? No, it can't be. Are you telling me it's him? M.B. Davis himself? I'm sure of it, pal. It seems the gossip was true. The eternal king of jazz in a madhouse. Oh, no, no, no. The poor devil. Ah, like an angel from heaven, isn't she? Yeah, half of her's still up there, I think. That's rude. Ah, oh, boo-hoo. Of all the great wild ones. Greetings, miss. Is it really you? Well, uh, yes. Yes, it really is you, the chicken police. I'm afraid so. Oh, of all that's furry and plumy, that's fantastic. Oh, my goodness. Uh, miss, we'd like to ask... Please, don't be scared. I'm just really, really, really excited. You know, I've read every book about you and your adventures, and I even collected newspaper articles when I was a little girl. Indeed. You can't imagine what an honor it is to meet you in person. We really... Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Take a deep breath, Miranda. Take a deep breath. Are you okay, miss? Yes, I am. I just needed some... air. So, dear detectives, Santino and Martin, what can I do for you? Well, miss, uh, we have some questions, if you don't mind. I'd love to answer all of your questions, detectives. Say, miss, uh, what can you tell us about this place? Our institution was standing even before the Great Meat War, and during the war it was transformed into a military hospital. Since then, we are relentlessly working on treating injured minds under the leadership of Dr. Quetzal, the famous specialist. The place seems pretty empty. 
Do many people work here? We have 32 residents and seven nurses, including me. We also have a three-person maintenance and cleaning staff and, of course, the heart and soul of our institution, Dr. Quetzal himself. I see. Now, this Dr. Quetzal, is he the director here? Exactly. Director, scientist, researcher, patron, and doctor. And even a friend. Quite a guy. He certainly is. So who is this Dr. Quetzal exactly? He's a world-famous researcher of the mind, Mr. Featherland. He published countless books in the fields of psychology and psychotherapy. Psycho... what? Unraveling the mind. It's the most crucial mission of the century, Mr. McChicken. That's really good to know. So this doctor's some celebrity, right? Does he usually meet uh, other important persons? I'm not sure I know what you mean. Oh, like uh, Mr. Hobart Wessler, for example. Ah, uh, yes. That's something you should ask the doctor himself, but unfortunately I don't think he has time right now. He's swamped, is he? Exactly, Mr. Featherland. He is very, very, very busy. All the time. I thought so. Now, what can you say about this, miss? Have you uh, seen anything like it? Of course. Our residents wear these for identification. But how did you come by it? They only wear them inside the institution. Huh. I see. The wristband does belong to one of our residents, but I'm afraid I'm not allowed to tell you more due to regulations. Oh, come on, Miranda. It's us, the chicken police. I'm sorry, I, I can't. Miranda, this case is a matter of life and death. Lives are in your hands. <sighs> All right. All right. I'll do it. Albert Wessler. The patient's name is Albert Taddeus Wessler. Figures. Just as we thought. Thank you, Miranda. We'll never forget this. Please, don't make me blush. And don't tell anyone you heard it from me. Oh, we won't. I promise. So when can we talk to Mr. Wessler? I need to ask Dr. Quetzal. Please wait here. Thank you. We need to let them know we're here first. Dr. Quetzal will see you. He's waiting for you in his office. Up the stairs, all the way down the hall, until the last door. What a surprise. It's enough to mention Wessler's name and all the doors are open. I wouldn't want to get mixed up in this, but do you think Albert is in danger? Danger? What do you mean? We haven't heard from him since he disappeared. And we're really, really worried. I see. Uh, we don't know yet, miss, but let's hope for the best. Great Wild Ones protect him. Where is he? No idea, Marty. The smell ugh, of all that's furry. I'll never get used to it. Well, reptiles have a disgusting body odor, Marty. But they feel exactly the same about us. Exactly.
Great wild ones, you scared the hell out of me. I already sensed your arrival from afar. You know, snakes have a different sense of smell, and birds used to be our prey once upon a time. Well, yeah. Luckily, we're living in civilized times. Lucky. Please, take a seat. How can I help you, gentlemen? Your office is, uh, rather Puritan. <laughs> Simple, I mean. Ain't that the truth? Well, yes. I can't let my mind wander from my work. I only keep what's essential in my office. I see. That makes sense. Why do you have bars on your windows? Because it's a room like all the others, and I'm just an animal, too, like all our residents. With the significant difference of you being a doctor and not a patient, am I right? It's not as big of a difference as you'd think. An isle of reason in a sea of insanity. Insanity is such a strong word, and it's mostly an abstract idea. Where does insanity start, and how long is one not insane? Interesting questions. Am I normal, or are you? Maybe neither of us. You see, that's something I think about a lot nowadays. If you like, I can give you an appointment. Oh, this is your chance, Sonny. Don't miss it. We're already here. Marty, clock up. A snake. I can't help it, but they make my feathers stand on end. To be honest, gentlemen, your visit is anything but a surprise. I could even say I was expecting it. What an introduction. Please forgive me. I have the bad habit of immediately getting into the middle of things. How very rude of me. My name is Dr. Seth. He was Quetzalcoatl, but most call me Dr. Quetzal to keep it simple. The name is Santino Featherland, and this is my partner, Martin McChicken, from... From the Predatory Division of the Clawville Police Department. Your fame is one step ahead of you. Ah, we're used to it. Certainly. We have some questions about one of your patients, if you don't mind. We'd like to talk to him, if that's possible. Please be specific, Detective. Look, Doctor, we're too tired to play cat and mouse. Not that snake and chicken sounds any better. Very funny, I must say. Just what I expected from you two detectives. We know you know it's about Albert Wessler, Ibn Wessler's secret twin. Ever since we've said his name, all the doors have miraculously opened. That's what we call a bullseye. Well, yes. Why should I deny it? We're talking about a rather illustrious patient here, who's also a very particular medical case. Now, that's much more interesting. So, are you willing to talk about him? Because Albert regrettably has disappeared, and you are police detectives, I have no reason not to talk to you. Of course, I'm at your service. But you must understand, I can't disclose information about my patients. Not even if it's a matter of life and death? Everything's a matter of life and death in here, detective. This is a hospital, even if it's primarily for the mind, not the body. 
Still, I'd like to give the impossible a try. Please, detective, just do your job, and I'll do mine. How long was Albert a resident of the institution? For quite some time, his first symptoms surfaced in his teens. Depression, panic attacks, and schizophrenia. Was he brought here immediately after the first signs that something wasn't right? You know, the biggest problem with an opinion on insanity Sanity is that animals are ashamed of it. That's the reason our institution stands out here in the middle of nowhere. Because animals would rather hide what they're afraid to face. I couldn't have said it better myself. As far as I know, the Wessler family wasn't exceptionally wealthy. Indeed, they were rather poor, but we offer our services gratis. Then how do you sustain yourselves? By the grace of the treasury of King Hector III, of course. I wouldn't have guessed that. My family and the royal dynasty had always been on good terms, Mr. Santino. What kind of a place is this, exactly? I assume it wasn't built as an insane asylum. It used to be a mansion. Construction started during the occupation in 622. Then it stood empty for almost a century, until finally it went to the crown of Clawville when Hector's great-grandfather took the throne. The rest is history. How long have you been working here? I've worked here for more than 30 years, but it's been in my family's possession for almost 150 years. So if I count correctly, as soon as it went to the crown, it was seized by your family. That's almost accurate, Mr. Featherland. What a lovely inheritance. Tell me, Doctor, do you know Madame Zavas? Just like everybody else, I've heard of her. But I never had the pleasure of meeting her in person. I'm sure she's an interesting case. Oh, you can be sure about that. I'd gladly get you two together if I had the chance. A spare cell would suit her very much. Is that so? As it turns out, she likes small, narrow, secret places. Oh, I see. What a coincidence. <laughs>